you are new, you are welcome and please subscribe to my channel. I talk of relationships, fashion, beauty and life experiences in general. So today is story time guys and I know you'll find this story very interesting because it is more of life experience. But before I start this story, I want you to know that I know how it feels to be desperate. I know how it feels to lose. I know how it feels to not having anything because that is how life is. Up and down, that is how we go. Sometimes you are up, sometimes you are down. So it's like that. So guys, if you've been following my stories, you know I worked in a microfinance and I was a loan officer. We used to give loans to individuals and groups. Then after that, these people were supposed to pay back. But before getting the loans, they were supposed to pledge their collaterals and a collateral was supposed to be two times the amount of the loan a client is taking. So this is where my story comes. When a person doesn't pay, we need to go back to this person and take the collaterals. <laughs> take them and sell them and bring back the money. So guys, my story number one, we had this client, she took the loan and she stopped paying for three months. We made all efforts to reach to this woman but failed. In the end, we decided to go as a team to her house to know what is going on. But in the past, we went to her house we could not find her. We could find the house is locked. So this time around, we used the neighbor to tell us when she is at house. And she told us, so we decided to go to her house because we are sure she was there. We got a call from the neighbor. So when we arrived, this client was there. I remember she was seated on the couch watching the tv it was in the morning it was a gospel song i remember <laughs> we found her there and she was like come in come in and she told us she's very asthmatic very sick she has been to the hospital for all that time that is why she couldn't pay we felt sorry for her in the beginning and she was talking in a very low tone. She was like, yes, I'm very sick, but you don't worry, I will pay. Give me two weeks, then I will clear the amount. So we told her, it has been three months, it's a lot of time, we want her to pay that day. So we gave her like one hour, to sort it out where she could get the money to pay us but in the end she said she doesn't have that money we should give her three weeks then she'll come and clear the amount we told her it's not possible we wanted the money that day if not we will take the collaterals which she pledged in the beginning so we told her you know how the contract says you need to pay or we take the collaterals oh my god guys when we told her we are going to take her collaterals <laughs> the sickness ended she stood up she said you are not taking anything in here <laughs> she started screaming she became very aggressive we are all like wow so she was not sick <laughs> she was pretending to be sick she was talking in a very loud tone but when we told her we are going to take her things the voice went up <laughs> so 
We told her, so we were, you were not sick. You are just lying. We are going to take the collaterals. She told us, you are not taking anything. I will do anything to you if you try to touch anything in here. So we told her, we are going to follow what the contract says. So we called the local government to come and witness. And in the end, we took the collaterals and we gave her one week to come to the office with the money. If not, we will sell the collaterals. This woman never came and we even extended a time, but she did not come and we decided to sell the collaterals and get back the money. So <laughs> that is the challenge number one. <laughs> people pretending to be sick <laughs> so challenge number two my client number two he was a man and he had a business of butchery this business was really good and he took a big amount of loan and his collateral was the land or a plot so he used to pay very well he could pay very well he never delayed but it reached at a time or at a moment, he stopped paying. You could call him, he could always give excuses, this, that, business is not doing good, give me some time. Then we excused him for some time. Then it continued like that. He could pay sometimes half, half of, the, of the amount he's supposed to pay, installment, because they used to pay every month so installment could come half this month then after two months nothing then the next month he pays again half so this really became a problem and it reached at a time he was not paying at all and we decided that it's time to take the collateral <laughs> so we went to his house because the butchery we went there at the butcher, it was closed. All his business places were closed. So we decided to go to his house. He was living with his mother and we found him there. We talked to the mother and explained everything. The mother said, yes, I know, but my son has been going through a lot, a lot, a lot. Business has stopped and it's really difficult time for us. So we told them that we are sorry and we understand things happen. So we gave them like an idea or a proposal that we should sell the plot that he pledged before. And they all agreed that that's a good idea. Yes, we should sell the plot. So. The loan officer that gave that man a loan had resigned. So I was in charge and I had to go to see the plot because I just saw the plot on the paper, uh, on the contract and all the documents of the plot. Yes, we had them. I saw them, but seeing this plot physically there to the plot, I had never been there. So I was supposed to go there and see the plot, then start planning on how we can get the client to buy that plot. So he agreed and he said, okay, I'm going to show you, let us go. But it wasn't near and he said, it's not near, but not so far. So I told him, okay. And he also told me that Due to the situation I'm in right now, I don't have even the money for transport to that plot. I told him, you don't worry, I'll pay for you. So we agreed and we went. I was with my other colleague, so we went to see the plot. So we took the bus and after the bus, he told us we need, we need to take to hire the motorcycle. In Africa, we use a lot of motorcycles. If you've been in Africa, you know it is our means of transport. So we took the motorcycle and started going. Guys, 
We stayed on the motorcycle for two hours without arriving to the plot. I felt tired, so my bum started hurting a lot because I had sat on the motorcycle for two hours, guys, without arriving. Then I asked this man, haven't we arrived? He told us, no. Oh my God. I started feeling very angry because at least he could have told the truth. <laughs> you prepare your mind. So we went then after two hours and a half, we arrived to the plot. Finally. So we went to the plot, he showed me and my colleague the plot and after that I told him, now that I have seen the plot, I think it's time we should go to the local government office to ask them some questions, you know, because it was a different place from where he lived. So he he looked shocked by me asking the local government offices. Then he said, okay, then we went. When we arrived, we found the local government officer in his office and we introduced ourselves and we told him that we want to sell the plot. Then he looked at that man and he was like, but you, why haven't you told these two ladies the truth? That land isn't yours. That land belongs to the government. It has been taken by the government because the road is going to pass there. And they have already measured. Yes, they are going to pay him some money, not much, some money. But this money is not going to be taken by him. It is going to be taken by another bank where he took the loan. Oh my God. It was a very shocking news for us. I looked at that man, I wanted, I don't know guys, I wanted to slap that man because I was really angry. Wasting all that money for transport till there, then that is what we get. Then I told him, but why? Then the local government said, yes, the first bank that gave the loan that we know is another and it is the one that is going to be paid when the government pays that money for the road for the plot because the plot had been measured and it is within the road area so guys i really felt bad I didn't know what to do. This was really a challenge time for me. So I told that man that, okay, so now I don't know what to do because it was the only hope we had left with the plot. Because even at his home, there were collaterals, but there were a few. The amount of loan he took was big. There weren't enough to clear the amount. So after that, I told him, I told my colleague, let us go. And he told us that, how can you leave me here? I don't have the transport to go back home. Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I'm going to leave you here. I don't know how you'll arrive at your home, but I'm going to leave you here. I can't spend more on you with all that you have paid us. Then. The other voice told me that this man looks very desperate and he really looked desperate guys yes he lied to us yes but he really looked desperate and he even started crying in front of that officer because he said that he has lost all he is frustrated he doesn't know even what to do yes he brought us there but his mind isn't working so good because he is very frustrated due to that all the businesses has shut down and he feels very very desperate so i felt sorry inside as a human being and i said what is to lose 
if you pay that transport and he returns home because he really didn't have any money with him guys and the place was very very far and i am not sure if that local government officer could give him the transport so to make sure that he returns home i decided to pay for him again guys so that he could return to his house and continue his life because even if i leave him there it doesn't mean that the plot will be a meaning to us for now it doesn't mean anything at all <laughs> it doesn't belong to the company so so i paid for him and we went back and returned to office my boss was really angry but fortunately this loan was not given by me it was by another officer so it was a loss guys for the company it was really a loss so I'm going to story number three. I hope you're not getting bored. So story number three, there was a, another client. She was a woman this time. She had a shop of utensils selling cups, glasses, plates, everything for the kitchen. So she did not pay for a long time and we decided to go for confiscation of the collaterals. So we arrived at her shop, she was there, and she looked very calm when she looked at us. And she was like, if you want money, I don't have money. If you want to take the things in my shop, that's fine, because right now I don't have anything, the business isn't going very well. So we said, ah, she has simplified this for us. So we called the local government again and when they arrived, because I was in charge, I had to go up with this, the stairs. I don't know if, what they call it. The one you use to go up to take things. So I, I, I went to the stairs and started pulling the boxes down. So when I pulled the first box, it was empty, guys. But the shop looked full. It was full of boxes, like everything is good, that, like the business is going so well. It wasn't empty. So when I touched the one box, empty, guys. I went to the next box, empty. Guys, only three boxes had cups inside. And two boxes had plates. That's all. The whole shop was full of empty boxes, guys. There was no business there at all. <laughs> I'm laughing now, but that moment I really got angry. Everything was empty and she knew what she was doing. So she used to use that shop to get loans from different banks and like that. So this was a mistake of a loan officer. Again, she was not my client. She was a client of my colleague and my, my colleague made a mistake, yes, we do mistakes sometimes, when she went for verification of the business. She did not verify very well that if the boxes she's seeing had things inside, so it was empty business, guys. And fortunately, she had another coll collaterals at her house, so we decided to go to her house very fast before the other bank comes in and takes all and we took all the collaterals we had to sell them and we cleared the balance <laughs> so my last client this was my client mine 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 <laughs> uh, he was a man he had he had a business it was a shop selling carpets the carpets these carpets we use for the house and and curtains so i got this client and i went for a verification of the business the business was okay i checked her sales i checked her the all investment the sales the income everything was okay and I checked her license because you ha we had to check the license of the business if it is in the name of the client 
the certificates, everything, guys. If he's paying the tax to the government, everything was really good. Tick, 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 everything. And when I finished the verification of the business, I had to grant the loan. He took the loan and the first installment, he did not pay, guys. The first one never paid. So my boss was like, what is going on? It's very strange. First installment, a client doesn't pay because we knew that even if a client is so bad, the first employment, the, sorry, the first installment, they always pay. But for that client of mine, the very first installment, he did not pay. I called him, he was not available. I called the guarantor because they, they used to have the guarantor. The guarantor wasn't picking. So the next thing I did, I went to his business. So when I arrived at his business, I found a woman seated outside of the shop. And I talked to her, I was like, is the name of the client? Is he around? And he was like, who is he? I told him the, the owner of this shop I was like, you are mistaken, you are in the wrong place. I said, how can I be in the wrong place? You are in the wrong place. If you think I'm joking, ask the neighbors. My neighbors here, who is the owner of this shop? I am the owner. I don't know who are you asking here. Who is the man you're asking? I don't know him. I was like, I came here, I verified everything. I saw the license, I saw the certificate, I saw everything that says he was the owner. How comes that you are saying you are the owner? He told me, my dear, I am the owner. I don't know what you're talking about. Guys, I was really angry. I felt like crying because this was really bad, 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 bad thing for me and for my job too. So I told, I told her that I came here. Even there is one neighbor here who saw me coming. Maybe you can ask her. She can testify that I came here and I found this man here because we used to have even the photos of the clients. I showed the photo of the client. This man was here, this date. Then she told me no. So we went to the neighbor to ask the neighbor and the neighbor guys denied that she never saw me to that shop. She has never saw me. She, it was this, the first time seeing me there. So guys, I returned to office, very frustrated. I didn't know what to do because it means that that amount of money was just thrown. You just throw it like that. No payment, nothing. So I was sure because I even visited the guarantor. So I said, so if he lied to me, I'll go to the guarantor and confiscate the things of the guarantor. Then that's it. So I planned to go to the guarantor and i found her there i talked to her then she was like he traveled to the village but i don't know when he will be back you wait i told her i cannot wait what i need is your support to help me go to his house and we confiscate the things if they won't be enough to pay the amount then i'm going to confiscate your things so we went to his house we found the wife but she escaped when she saw us and she left her kids there the kids were very very young guys like one was four years and another was i think like 80 years young they don't know anything guys and i felt re really bad when i looked at those kids but at the same time i needed to do my job so we called the local government and confiscated the things where the team my colleagues helped me and we took the things that same day we went to the market and we started auctioning guys do you know singing like 
you take like something, let us say it's a, it's a TV, you start marketing it, guys. Like um, if it is 50 euro or one, 100 euro, 100 euro, then another person says 105, like that, then auctioned all. And at the end of the day, we got half amount of the loan he took. So we had to talk to the guarantor and I told the guarantor that you need to pay this remaining amount. Or I go and take your collaterals. Then the guarantor say that I'll be responsible. I'm going to start paying installmently because yes, I guaranteed this man for the loan, but my husband doesn't know that I am the guarantor to this man. So to save my marriage, please, I'll be paying every month so we made a contract and she continued paying but it was a very big challenge for me guys and my boss really got angry at me so much <laughs> but guys it wasn't my fault the guy really played very smart so i hope you have enjoyed this story of mine the challenges of life it's like that there are so many i went through a lot of challenges with that job but guys i enjoyed doing it because you work with the community you you get to know life how life is because sometimes you could go to a client and you you find her she's in a very terrible situation and you look at this client she isn't pretending it's true life has really slapped her or him so that's it guys thank you so much for watching till now please give it a thumbs up if you've liked this video comment what you think about this video also don't forget to share with your family with your friends everyone that you think will enjoy this video watch my other videos too my other stories they are so good and some other stories are coming too very interesting Please don't forget to subscribe again. Subscribe, please, please. <laughs> Let us meet in my next video. I love you so much. Ciao, ciao.